It's time again for the Science Bowl. Zoo Parade for Five. What big teeth the hippo has are actually a pair of these. Science Potpourri for 10. Would a snake most likely eat every day? Every week, Dateline Science for 10. Why are some elephants wearing necklaces these days? Green things for 15. And now, here's your host, Mr. Z himself, Dave Zarin. Thank you, and welcome to the Science Bowl, the science quiz program here in the Prince George's County Public Schools. We have two outstanding schools playing our game today. Judge Sylvania Woods is going to be taking on the Leland Academy. Let's meet that first team from Judge Woods and say hello to Justin Williams. Hey, Justin, wave to everybody at home if you would. He is a sixth grader. Joining him is Bolu. Hey, Bolu, another sixth grader. And rounding out the team from Judge Woods is James. Hey, James, give us a nice wave. Got a good smile there. Everybody seems ready and willing to do this. All right. We have six categories of questions on the science ball, ranging from green things to dateline science. Let's go to the green things category, and we have three questions for you. One worth five points, one worth 15, one worth 25. Judge Woods, the first question of the game in green things is green things for five points. A timber line is easy to spot on a mountain. It's where none of these can be seen above it. I'm not too sure about that one. What do you think, Bolu and James? Uh, I think it's where you can't see the trees anymore. Yeah. Um, I agree. That's it. That's it. You can't see the trees. The timber line, you see it mount. All of a sudden, the trees disappear. And it's because the environmental conditions, not enough rain, maybe too cold. Nice answer. Thank you there for your help, James. Trees get you five points. Good start. Here's 15 points. Let's show you a picture. This is a visual for green things for 15 points. You know, while trees don't have emotions, they can't laugh, they can't cry, but if they did have emotions, perhaps the saddest one would be this tree, the weeping what? Willow. Willow. That is the weeping willow. That's exactly right. Good answer. 25 points. If you're a baseball fan, you know you watch the pitcher on the mound, and they're always doing something with their hands. To get a better grip on the baseball, baseball pitchers often use a rosin bag that's filled with this sticky substance found in this extracted from fir trees. A sticky substance that is extracted from fir trees in this rosin bag, a sticky substance. What is it? Resin. Give me another word for that. Sap. You got it. Sap or resin, got yourself 25 points. You ran that category. Perfect, guys. Let's go to the zoo for five points. In the disturbing book called Animal Farm, the evil characters are these porcine barnyard animals that in real life sling mud only when keeping cool. I think it's pig. Yeah, I'm going to agree with Bolu. It is pigs, yes. Napoleon and those awful pigs. Uh, kind of a takeoff on what communism was and is like. Good answer. Pigs it is. 15 points in Zupri. The headline in the newspaper about how close the National Zoo's lioness came to dying from COVID-19 read that she had survived by the skin of her what? Teeth. Teeth is right. The skin of your teeth is the phrase. Is James, you are hot today. Yeah. Absolutely right. And for 15 points, for, actually for 25 points in Zoo Parade, big one in this category. Over the course of their lives, frogs can breathe three different ways. Can you tell me the three ways a frog can breathe over the course of its life? Remember, it goes through different stages to become a frog. Can you give me all three ways it can breathe? Um, it's gills. Um, through its lungs, probably. And maybe its mouth. You got the gills, you got the lungs, 
The third one was the tough one. They can skin. bring Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely. Just in the nick of time. Skin is right. All right. Perfect score thus far, Judge Woods. Let's go to the body systems. Your last three questions before we take our first break. You guys are hot. Five points in body. A favorite emoji that expresses embarrassment or frustration shows a person putting this P, as in Paul, this P initial body part against his or her face. Palm. Palm, palm is right. A face palm is right. Yep. For 15 points in body. This word describes a part of the blood, the liquid part of the blood, and describes one of the four states of matter, a gas with an electric charge. Same word describes both of those. Do you guys have any ideas? Plasma, maybe? Yeah, I was thinking. Say it again, Justin. Plasma. Plasma is correct. Yes, sir. 25 points in body systems. Get this one, and you'll have a perfect score in the first round. When it comes to the most digestion and nutrient absorption after you've eaten, one writer said, all the magic happens in this organ. Maybe a kidney? A liver? Or your stomach? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm going to say intestines. I hear all kinds of answers here. Justin, you get to choose. Stomach. Oh, yes, indeed. See, James came closest. It was the small intestine. Still, an almost perfect round. That means 160 points as we go to our first break. Congratulations. It is now time to meet that team from Leland Charter School, and let's say hello to their captain, Sarah. Hey, Sarah, wave to everybody at home. Sarah is a fifth grader, and she's joined by two other fifth graders. There is Sean. Hey, Sean, wave to everybody at home. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and also we have Aaliyah, another fifth grader. Hey, Aaliyah. Thanks for joining us today. Let's get to the game, and let's go to your green things question. We have a five, a 15, and a 25-point question. Here is your five-point question in green things. And to start out, we have a picture. Look at this. In America's War of 1812, when a British ship fired a cannonball at the USS Constitution, you see it here, and the cannonball bounced off the side, the British Admiral said, that ship must be made of iron. That's where the ship got its nickname, Old Ironsides. But you know what? That ship wasn't made of iron. Rather, it was made from the wood of this tree that produces acorns. You guys have any ideas? Um, how about oak tree? Yeah, I, I like it. Too. An oak tree is where you get the acorns. Exactly right. So we faked out the British. Yeah, that was a pretty strong wood on that ship. Good start. Let's go to 15 points of multiple choice. An invasive plant called cheat grass has become a botanical bully in the West. It is out competing the natural plants, the native plants, or the naive plants. This cheat grass that doesn't belong, it's an invader. It is out competing the natural plants, the native plants, or the naive plants. Got three choices, pick one. Um, I think maybe the native plant. But what do you guys think? Uh, what was the plant's names again? Okay. Uh, the plants that are normally there, that are get, being elbowed out by this alien cheat grass, the plants that live there all the time, are they called the natural plants, the native plants, or the naive plants? See, I'm going to say the natural plants, but, it's, you know. I think it's native. The, the only reason All I'm right. saying natural plants is because, you know, there is artificial plants now that is um, making the natural plants. Now people don't want to buy them. But are we going I with like native I, or natural? I, I, All right. Uh, Sarah, your choice. 
native plants. It is native plants, absolutely right. And you're right, Sean, you know, people do buy artificial plants, but out in nature, you know, you would have the real things out there. Native plants is right. Two in a row, let's go for three. 25 points in green things. The reason the dinosaurs died out after an asteroid hit the Earth long ago was that so much debris was released into the atmosphere that the plants at the bottom of the food chain could no longer get enough light to perform this food-making process in plants. I think photosynthesis. I agree. She, she had her hand up. She said, it is photosynthesis, and she is right. You are all right. 25 points. Good work. Let's go to the zoo. Five points. A giant vacuum cleaner designed to suck carbon dioxide out of the air and store it underground has been called by the company in Iceland that invented it by this name, which is another name for a killer whale. Um, I'm kind of lost on the question. What do you guys think? Maybe the whole um, question maybe? revolves around this vacuum cleaner that is sucking carbon dioxide out of the air because we know it's involved in climate change. The name of this vacuum cleaner has what same name as what we oftentimes call a killer whale. A Roomba. <laughs> I like a Roomba. I think it's a Roomba. I think I agree with Sean. All right, Sarah, you're hearing lots of ferment on your team. All right, Madam Captain, what's your answer? I think it's Orca. It is orca, absolutely right. A Roomba is, <laughs> is not a real thing, but it certainly does act like a real thing, Sean. I like your sense of humor. Aaliyah, I like your thinking too. Orca is right. Let's go to 15 points in zoo. The belief that certain dragonflies can migrate 2,000 miles across the Indian Ocean is being investigated in a scientific experiment. At this point, it is considered one of these steps in the scientific method that has to be tested. At this point, it is just a guess, otherwise known as this. Hi, 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 folks. Yep, yep. It okay. is the hypothesis yeah. is right. You know it. How many of you do science fair projects or STEM projects? We're yeah, you know all not about the right hypothesis. Oh, right now. So, you know, you form a hypothesis and you see if you can prove or disprove it. Nice work, guys. 25 points in the zoo. You got a perfect score so far. Keep it going. Some scientists are trying to create a hybrid creature they're going to call a mammophant. A mammophant. A combination of what extinct pachyderm and what living pachyderm. Okay. A mammophant. M a m m o p h a n t. An I extinct know. pachyderm and a living pachyderm. A hybrid it creature. Might be mammoth. It's a woolly mammoth. It might be mammoth and, and elephant. Elephant and woolly mammoth. I think that's true. You got yeah. it. You got it. Woolly mammoth and elephant. Perfect for twenty-five points. Yes, indeed. Pat yourselves on the back. Body assistance for five points. Three more questions before we take our break. If you share a story about something that's bothering you with a friend, you might then say, thanks for listening. I needed to get that off my what? Chest. Body chest. Body. Hey, get yes. it off my chest. I was going to say, otherwise known as the thorax, you didn't need it. You guys are, you're hot today. It is. Get it off my chest. Multiple choice for 15 points. Multiple choice. If someone is ambidextrous, ambidextrous, do they have an extra finger? Are they double jointed? Or can they use both hands equally well? Both hands equally both well. Hands equally well. That is correct. Yeah, absolutely for 15 points. Last question of the first half. Get it right and you will have a perfect score. This P as in Paul, P initial gland in your head is known as the master gland because it produces six different hormones, the most familiar of which are growth hormones and one that stimulates the thyroid gland. Name that P initial gland. Can you repeat the question? 
This P initial gland in your head is known as the master gland because it produces six different hormones. Most familiar of them, the growth hormones and one that stimulates the thyroid gland. Do you guys have any ideas? No. Uh, I'm getting blanks on this one. It's called the pituitary. The pituitary gland is your master gland. So file that away for future reference. All the other questions you got correct, which means you end the first round with 160 points. Uh, we have a tie score. It is 160 all. We'll see you guys back in a few moments. Nice work. Let's welcome back that team from Judge Sylvania Woods. They're sitting with 160 points, and uh, they're ready and raring to get some more points on the board. Let's find out about our players. Let's go first to talk to Justin. Justin, how did they make you the captain of the team? They really chose well. Yes, I do really good at practice. That really shows, too. And uh, tell us how you prepared for the show. Did you get together? Because I know it's hard during the pandemic here. Did you watch old shows? Did you stay? Did you search the internet? How did you get all this science knowledge? Because you've got a lot. Because I really look at Animal Planet. I, lo I really look at your videos and stuff. That's wonderful. Thank you for doing that. And Animal Planet is one of my favorites as well. It's just terrific. That and uh, BBC America with all of those great nature specials they have on there. Keep up your good work here in the second half, Justin. Let's talk to your teammates. Hey, Bolu. Bolu, why'd you want to be on our show today? We're really happy you did join us. Um, I liked, I wanted to be on science well because I like science. That's the, a, a very good reason. Would you like to be a scientist someday? And don't feel you have to say so. Tell us what you might want to do someday. Um, I like soccer a lot, so I, I wish to be a soccer player. Yeah, and you know, you could probably do both because most soccer players, they have a shorter career. You know, everybody gets older and maybe you could have another career that you could fall back on, maybe be a soccer commentator. Anyhow, you're doing a nice job here today. You keep it up. Bolu, and let's talk to James. James, welcome to the show. James, you know an awful lot about science. You're jumping right on these questions. Have you always been a great science student? Oh, well, when I was like little, I used to watch a lot of scientific shows. So that's how I know a lot about science and stuff. Boy, and you've always got a very good memory because that's all coming back today. What would you like to do someday with your life? Have you thought about that yet? I would want to be a doctor and help people feel better. And we're certainly seeing during the pandemic uh, what it's like not to feel well. And so many people and the doctors are being stretched thin. So uh, it's, it's great to hear that that's something you want to do. Good luck to you in that and in the second half here, James. All right, Judge Woods, it's now time for your last nine questions. Let's go to the let's get physical category. We've got three questions for you, a five, a 15, and a 25. Here's the five point question in let's get physical. The lead Canada goose in the geese's V-shaped flight formation. When you see the geese flying overhead, they're always in a V-shape. That lead goose creates this force with the down flap of its wings, making it easier for the other geese to spend less energy. For when they're migrating? What force? What force? is that lead goose creating with the down flap of its wings. It's making it easier for the geese behind it to fly. Um, I'm going to say potential energy. Uh, Wind? Kinetic energy? You're all, yeah, I like all your ideas. The, the force is lift. It's creating lift. That makes it easier for the other geese to fly and not expend so much energy. Let's try the 15 point question and let's get physical. Methane makes up 90% of this fuel that many people use to power their appliances and to heat their homes. Gas, maybe? Gas is right, yes, natural gas, good, 15 points. If you've ever, have you ever ridden Metro? I know Metro is having some problems. Any, any of you ever been on the Metro trains? Well, if you go down to the station, there's a warning. The third rail in Metro stations, which powers the trains, must never be touched. It can electrocute you instantly. 
because it packs 750 of these electrical units. Volts. Volts is right. Good. That's what you need. It got those 25 points. Nice going, guys. Let's go to Pope Reef for five points. I like this question. To slow down the melting of a glacier in Germany, scientists have covered part of it with a cloth of what color? White, because it's chaotic. Yeah, I'm going to agree you, with Justin. I agree. Absolutely right, because white will reflect the sun because if you put a black cloth on it, what's it going to do? It's going to absorb the sunlight, and it's going to make it melt even faster. Nice thinking, guys. That was just what I hoped you would do. 15 points in potpourri. Multiple choice. Let's see if you know your metric system. One of the vaccine production companies recently said it is booster shots would only need to contain one half the amount of the original dose, meaning the patient would receive just 50 micrograms of the vaccine. A microgram is equal to one thousandth, one millionth, or one billionth of a gram. A microgram, one thousandth, one millionth, or one billionth. I'm gonna say one thousandth. I agree. Justin. Um one thousandth? It was the one in the middle, one millionth of a gram. One millionth is a microgram. Let's get this 25-pointer in potpourri. We've heard so much about COVID and vaccines. The messenger RNA used in the COVID-19 vaccines was developed using a bacteria usually associated with contaminated food. Sometimes they recall lettuce or cantaloupes. They say, be careful there is a bacteria in there that can make you sick. Its scientific name has two parts. The first name is a big one, Escherichia. Most people just say E, followed by what four-lettered species name? E what? A bacterium that can sicken you. I think it's E. E. coli? E. coli. It is E. coli. That's it. Perfect, guys. 25 points. Beautiful. Dateline for five points, a visual. Let's have a look. You know, the new James Webb telescope that was 25 years in the making, it is so powerful, this new one, that they say it could detect a bumblebee on the surface of the moon. Replaces this telescope that was sensitive to visible and ultraviolet light that was launched back in 1990. Name this original telescope that the Webb telescope is replacing. I know what it is. It begins with a W. Mm, what do you say, Bolu? Um, I don't have an idea. The Webb? Well, the Webb telescope is the new one. The picture I just showed you was the telescope that it is replacing. That's called the Hubble the Hubble Space Telescope. That's the one that's been up there all these years, has been sending out back wonderful pictures. But this one, the web, is now, it's now one million miles from Earth. Who knows what it will show us. For 15 points in Dateline, multiple choice. Actor William Shatner, Captain Kirk of Star Trek fame, became at the age of 90, the oldest person ever to travel into space. He flew aboard a rocket named for this first American to travel in space, who famously hit a golf ball on the moon. Was it John Glenn, Buzz Aldrin, or Alan Shepard? John Glenn. I agree. I agree. John, John Glenn uh, is certainly a famous American astronaut. He was the first man to go around the Earth but he never went to the moon. Alan Shepard was the man who went to the moon. He was the first American in space, uh, and he hit that golf ball up there. So it was called the Shepard rocket. Tw uh, 25 points, last one in the game for you guys. Let's get it. Let's go out with these 25, this 25-pointer. 25 because she carried a gene for this H initial disease that causes uncontrolled bleeding, 
Queen Victoria spread the disease through many European royal families because so many of them intermarried. Name that H initial disease that describes when someone cannot stop bleeding. Hemophilia. It is absolutely hemophilia, Justin, and that means you end this game, just would end the game with 255 points. That is a tremendous score. We'll see you guys back at the end of the game. It is now time to welcome back that team from Leland. Let's find out about our players before we ask them their last nine questions. Let's go to their captain. And Sarah, you are, not only are you cool and poised, but you know an awful lot of science. How do you know so much science? I don't know. I think it's because I'm very interested in it and I like to pay attention in science class. And that shows. It shows you have a natural curiosity and you've got a great memory. And I like too how you're dealing with your, your colleagues there. Everybody is getting their chance to have their say and you are uh, coming in just as you should. What do you want to do someday? Have you thought about that? Yes, I want to be an astronaut that's also a scientist. Wow. And really, to be an astronaut, you have to be sort of a scientist. You've got to know all the STEM subjects to go up there. And, uh, you know, Elon Musk wants us to go to Mars. Maybe you'll go to Mars someday. Maybe, maybe. <laughs> Keep up your good work. Let's talk to your teammates. Let's go to Sean. Hey, Sean. Sean, Hello. you have such an out. You have such an outgoing personality. Uh, Thank you. What do you want to do someday? You're welcome. I can see you being a commentator or somebody on television. Am I close? Yeah, oh, um, so what are, so wait, can you go ask the question again? I'm sorry. I was just thinking uh, because of you, you're such a good communicator that maybe you might want to go into that as a profession someday. I mean, yeah, because, um, you know, it's kind of my dream to be famous and get known for something. But, you know, also being a celebrity will be hard. So I don't know if I want to be a celebrity. But I want to be known for something here, like, um, good. Like, not drama, but something really good, um, like, a safe, like, kind of like a scientist, maybe. Because, you know, I could have saved a pandemic or something. So I want to be known for something that's good. That is a wonderful ambit. In fact, I think all humans want to be, we all want to be noted, we want to be remembered for something, and you have, uh, you have a nice humility about you, you have the gift of the gab, as they say, and uh, something tells me you're going you're gonna to live out that dream. Good luck for Thank the second you. half here. You're welcome. Let's talk to your other teammate here. Let's talk to Aaliyah. Hey, Aaliyah, what brought you Hi. to the science ball? Hi, How did, why did you want to do this? I wanted to do the science ball because I read a lot of books about science, and I like to well, my family says I like to ask a lot of questions about just different topics, and I also like to watch TV, and I'm, I'm really close with our science teacher, our science teacher, Ms. Awana, and I enjoyed learning her class. Well, Ms. Awana is very happy to hear you say that, and I think everyone is impressed with what you do and what you've known and what you've shown us so far, and uh, I can tell, you know, that science is important to you, and you're obviously a very good student. Nice to have you here today. All right. Let's go, Leland. Let's get to the second half here. Your last nine questions. Let's go to let's get physical for five points. We're going to start you out with a multiple choice question. Here we go. Solar panels. So many people are using solar panels now to get their energy. Solar panel energy is measured in megawatt hours, one of which can power an average home for three weeks. Is a megawatt, M-E-G-A-W-A-T-T, one thousand watts, one million watts, or one billion watts. Uh, okay. Okay. No. So I have an idea of what it might be, but I'm also open to you guys' ideas. I think it might be one million watts. What do you guys think? See, I think it's one million watts also because it is one million watts. All three of you are in agreement. Nice start to the second half. Let's go to 15 points. I like this question. To solve the climate change problem, some scientists are resorting to teaching cows how to use a toilet. Yes, you heard right. They're calling them moo-loos. Cows using a toilet? Why would you want a cow to use a toilet? Well, because it is producing eight gallons of urine a day that contains a chemical with the formula NH4 which helps to form greenhouse gases. 
is NH4. NH4 has a strong odor. It's used in smelling salts. And it is an excellent household cleaning liquid. What is that chemical? At first, I was thinking it might be nitrogen, but like, what do you guys think? Um, um nitrogen, but I'm not sure. Yeah, yeah I, I think it could be nitrogen. You know, Aaliyah, you were onto things, something because NH3 is a kind of nitrogen compound. NH4 is ammonia, household ammonia that you can use for cleaning and they put them in smelling salts and it is in urine, it is in urine. Let's go to the 25 point question. Let's get this one. A German chemist in the late 1660s failed in his attempt to use the element phosphorus, which has the symbol P on the periodic table, to do what so many scientists had long sought to do. They all failed. They were trying to turn the element with the symbol PB into the element AU in a get-rich-quick scheme. What are those two elements? They were trying to turn P, capital P like in Paul, small b as in boy, PB into AU. Trying to change what metal into what metal in a get-rich-quick scheme? I, I'm pretty sure AU is gold. Hmm. So, so maybe, maybe they, they tried, tried to change the um, PB, the PB's part. But what does PB stand for? PB is lead. They were trying to change lead into gold. And PB comes from plumbum. And that's where we get the word plumber, because pipes used to be made of lead. And of course, now we know lead can be very dangerous. Foul that away. Potpourri for five points. Here we go. It was a Frenchman by the name of Lavoisier, the discoverer of oxygen, who determined that water is not a chemical element, but rather one of these composed of atoms of the elements oxygen and hydrogen. It is an M initialed term. A mineral? A mineral? Say it I think again. A mineral. Ah, not a good, not a good try. It's a molecule. You get a molecule of water made up of atoms. Atoms make up molecules. All right, 15 points. I know you're going to get this one right. Here's a picture for you. You are looking at the new James Webb telescope that was just launched and is now one million miles from Earth. Since that big shield there you see in front of you is the size of a football field, they had to protect it when it was aboard the rocket. And then when it got into space, it unfolded where it will then start to do its work. It was all folded up at the beginning, which is why they likened it to this oriental art of paper folding. Origami. Origami, that's right. They called it the origami shield. Perfect, perfect. I knew you'd get that one. For 25 points, <laughs> this is, uh, you know, maybe too much information. You know, Lewis and Clark were famous explorers who explored out toward the Pacific Ocean many years ago when America was young. Well, in their journey, back in 1804, Lewis and Clark carried with them a liquid that they called Russia's Thunderbolt. <laughs> which was one of these kinds of L-initialed liquids that you can find in your medicine cabinet today that will help relieve constipation. Um, Merlax. Lac lactose. Lactose. Oh, come on. You're close. You're close. Lactose. Laxative. Laxative. That's it. That's what I want to hear. It was a laxative. So these poor explorers, they were all stuffed up. They couldn't go to the bathroom. So Russia's Thunderbolt helped them reach the Pacific Ocean. Three more questions. Five points. Dateline. NASA's Lucy spacecraft will be visiting the so-called Trojan asteroids. They're in the same orbit as this fifth planet from the sun, whose gravity has trapped the asteroid has trapped the asteroids. Name that fifth planet from the sun. Jupiter? Um, Saturn? You should be counting on your fingers. <laughs> oh, Lord. 
that. Okay. It's trap it. So, okay. All right. Let, all right, Captain. Captain, what you got? Sarah. Oh, it was Jupiter. Jupiter. Saturn is number six. Uranus is seven, and Neptune is eight, and Pluto got kicked out, so there is no number nine. Let's go to 15 points in Dateline. The Food and Drug Administration is warning us Americans that we are eating about 3,400 milligrams of this condiment with the chemical formula NACL, which we know can lead to hypertension and other heart problems. Name that condiment. The only rock that we eat. Can you re um can you um ask the question again? The Food and Drug Administration is telling us that we are eating too much of a chemical, a condiment, with the formula NA, that's one of the elements making it up, C L N A C L, which can lead to hypertension, high blood pressure and other heart problems. It is known as the only rock that we human beings eat. It's okay. There's a lot of condiments that a lot of humans eat, but I would think it's ketchup. Okay, I got a ketchup. Aaliyah, what are you thinking? Because I see you thinking deeply over there. Well, you said like the only rock we eat. And Correct. I don't think ketchup's a rock and I don't, hmm. All right, our captain is up there. She's musing. She's musing. Sarah, what do you think? Correct answer is salt. Salt is a condiment. And we use too much of it. We're always trying to cut back, you know, on the labels on food. It always tells you how much salt is in it uh, because it too much, it's too much of a good thing. Last question of the game. 25 points in Dateline. In the 1920s, thousands of workers were painting the faces of watches with this radioactive chemical element with the symbol RA that made the watches glow in the dark. It used to be that your watch could glow in the dark because it had this chemical element. It was radioactive, and the workers who were doing that got poisoned. Many of them died because they did not know how dangerous it was. Name that chemical element. It has the symbol R-A. Uranium? Uh, um, mm -hmm. I, think. I think maybe like something that begins with like radioactive or like something that ends with an A. So maybe like... Radiation. Radiation... All oh, those were good tries. I like uranium. I liked radioactive. Radium was the right answer. Still, you had a great round and a great game, and your final tally is 205 points. Leland, congratulations. You should feel proud of yourselves. You know, uh, all of our science bowl games are terrific, but rarely do we get a bunch of students, a group of students, as smart and as poised and as fun as the ones you've just seen. We're so proud of them, fifth and sixth graders. I dare say many of you at home probably couldn't answer the questions that they just did because they're such great students. Our final tally today, and it reflects the amount of knowledge that the students brought today, was Leland, 205, Judge Woods, 255. So Judge Woods, congratulations. Let's give a nice round of applause to Dr. Buns and Ms. Fenwick and Justin and Bolu and James. They, we will all see you in the next round. You played a terrific, terrific game. And let's have a round of applause for that Leland team. Also magnificent playing today. Sean and Sarah and Aaliyah. Marley is the alternate out there. Miss Lawson is here. Uh, Mr. Richardson, who spearheaded this team a couple of years ago. Miss Murphy, Awana, and all of you. Thank you for being here today. We couldn't have done it without you. And uh, all of you students, I hope you take time to thank all of the adults who made this possible. Uh, and I want to thank you guys, because you didn't have to do this. It takes courage to do this, to put yourself out there. And you challenged yourself, and that's a large part of what life is. And I congratulate you for that. I want to see you guys from Leland next year come back and play the game again. And the team from Judge Woods, we're going to see you in the afternoon game today. Maybe a step to a county championship. 
All right, everybody. Thank you for being here. Until next time, everybody, this is Dave Zarin. Thanks for watching Science Bowl. Bye-bye now.